Hey guys, how's it going? It's the Gamers Weekly here. I'm your host, Antalk, and today we'll be taking a look at Iron Banner. Yes, Lord Salad is, an, is here, and that means Iron Banner is upon us. Also, guys, thank you mu so much for 50 subscribers. That's absolutely insane, and with this awesome milestone, we're going to be giving away a... Or sorry, we're going to be doing a 50 subscriber giveaway. Uh, we'll be giving away one double XP code for Destiny 2. In order to be entered in the giveaway, all you have to do is be a subscriber and like this video. Anyways, guys, let's get into today's topic, which is Iron Banner. Today, I thought it would be a great time to go over what Iron Banner is for new players to Destiny and going over the armor sets and weapons for each class. Real quick thing to note is that I don't have a hunter that's level 20. I was unable to get him to level 20 in time. Uh, so I will be using a photo of hunter armor. Sorry for this inconvenience. However, we still have the warlock and titan armor we can look at as well as all the weapons. So as you guys can see, we're starting off with my warlock. Here is where Lord Saladin resides. Uh, essentially what Iron Banner is, is a multiplayer game mode. It was um, in the original Destiny, so veterans of the Destiny franchise will know it very well. Um, personally, I'm not a too big of a fan of Iron Banner because I'm just not very good at PvP. But uh, yeah, here is Lord Saladin. Let's go ahead and go over with the Warlock armor set. So he has faction rewards. He, um, you get, I guess you save up tokens um, pretty much like any other faction rep. Um, pretty simple to get them. All you have to do is play through uh, some of the uh, challenges and do PvP matches. So we have the Iron Engram. For me, it's 281 power right now. That's just because my power isn't super high. Um, but yes, let's go ahead and take a look at this. Here we go. And this is what it looks like. There we go. There it's this is what it looks like. It looks really, really cool for warlocks. I really like the way the fur looks on the back, but um yeah, let's go to take a look at the hood. So with the hood we have the resilience, increased resilience, heavy warlock armor, we have mobility enhancement, and we have restorative mod. Um, then we have our empty mod sockets, which you can put different mods in. We have default shaders, or you know, you can put whatever shaders you want, as well as you can infuse it. Um, and as you guys can see, this has the little horns right here, and then a little thing in the back, and then it's got some stuff in the middle, which looks pretty, pretty cool. Um, so let's move on to the gauntlets. So here we have heavy warlock armor, which will improve our resistance again, or our resilience, sorry. Uh, we have a mobility enhancement mod, and we have another resilience mod, um, so you can double up on your resiliences. We have infuse, we have normal mod socket, and we have, uh, you know, your default shader. Um, which you can change around if you do wish to. Uh, and then we have our iron, or sorry, our chest armor. Uh, again, this is heavy warlock armor, which improves your resilience. It looks really cool. Again, it's got that little fur on it. Uh, some titan legendaries have that little fur in the back, and it looks really cool. And then at the front, it has this kind of, um, kind of symbol of the iron banner, which looks really cool in gold and green. It looks really nice. We have a mobility enhancement mod. And we have a restorative mod, so pretty good. You can increase your um, restoration and stuff. Again, same armor mods on the bottom as well. Infuse so mod sockets and shaders. Moving on to the leg armor. So we have heavy warlock armor. We have increased mobility. And then we have another resilience mod, so you can double up on your resiliences. These look pretty cool. However, I don't honestly like boots like I don't really think that they make too much of a difference with your appearance because half of the time they cover it up with like different warlock robes but for titans and hunters they do look pretty cool but I do like kind of the shin guards right there uh, and then we have the bond which looks really awesome it's kind of like this this wolf head which looks really really cool um, nothing really here other than just getting that light up but yes it does look pretty cool it's got this gold on it and it's got this a wolf symbol and kind of wrapped around your arm which looks really cool Alright, so let's go ahead and move on to the Titan. Alright, here we are on my Titan. Let's open this guy up. I accept that. Iron Engram. And here's what it looks like for the Titan. This is the Titan armor. Looks pretty cool. Uh, if it will load up. There we go. Looks really, really awesome. Very similar to the Warlock. Um, one noticeable difference is obviously the pauldrons, which look really cool with the, um, 
the wolf wolf heads on this each, each side it's got kind of the same helmet and the same chest armor design uh gauntlets are or sorry the boots are a bit different than the warlocks but all in all this looks like a really really cool titan armor set so let's start off with the helmet so we have restorative titan armor and this increases your recovery which basically increases your health region um so that's going to be pretty nice for titans although i would honestly prefer to get more resilience. We have a mobility mod and a restorative mod so you can double up again. Um, same thing goes with the infusion um, shaders and of course we have the um, open mod socket, socket that you can use. Um, looks really cool with the gift of the nine by the way. <coughs> so again empty mod socket and infusion. Okay now we have the gauntlets these look really really awesome again <laughs> they just look really cool in my opinion I uh, definitely would like to get those but uh, yes again restorative titan armor um, we have increased resilience and increased health regen you can infuse, put a mod socket, and shader next up we have the chest piece or the chest armor for this we have a restorative titan armor mod, increased uh, resilience mod, and we have a increased health recovery mod. Again, armor mods on the bottom. I know this kind of gets a bit repetitive me saying that, but uh, yeah. Let's move on to the leg armor. Here we go. Again, increased recovery. Um, our next mod is the increased mobility, and then we have another restorative mod that will increase our recovery. And these look really, really cool as well. They kind of got these knee pads and shin guard things and then little pads on the top. They all around look pretty cool. Um, so, yeah. Moving on to the Titan Mark. We go. Nothing too special. Really just getting it for the light. It looks really cool. It's kind of got this like cloth looking green. It looks really cool with this little gold medallion right there. Kind of holding it all together. It looks really cool. I say that about everything, but yeah. Um, and real quick before I forget, here are the shaders. The Iron Battalion shader is the first one here. Looks kind of cool. It's got like kind of this gray, blackish color with uh, green and gold kind of mixed in. Looks looks pretty cool with this armor set that I'm using. Um, and then we have the Iron Wolf, which is very similar to Fighting or Fighting Talons, I think is what it's called. Uh, correct me in the comment section down below, but it looks very similar to that at least. Um, to me because the only thing that really changes is the green um, you can kind of see patches of green on it but it's got that very silverly silverly look to it um, and kind of a gold look to it as well looks really cool but uh, yes so let's move on or sorry unfortunately since I don't have the in-game hunter armor set I have to rely on a picture but here's what it looks like unfortunately I can't give you the stats of each armor piece so if anyone could let me know in the comment section below that would be awesome um, so finally let's take a look at each weapon let's start off with the auto rifle which is called the forward path so this is a 600 rpm um, auto rifle it's got adaptive frame on it we have red dot 2 MOA we have red dot micro we have rifle scope SSF. Uh, I personally prefer the red dot micro, um, but really it's just down to personal preference when it comes to scopes. Um, especially with auto rifles, they're just kind of customizable all around. Um, this does look very similar to the Origin Storm, which is a Vanguard weapon. However, it's kind of that middle tier with decent impact and decent rate of fire. We have armor piercing rounds, which will increase our range and stagger against enemies. It also will over penetrate um, enemies as well. Sorry, um, but yes, again, 600 RPM and decent impact. It's got also a decent range, decent reload speed, decent handling, decent stability. Just kind of all around decent stats. Very kind of in the in the middle auto rifle. We have extended mag, which will increase our magazine size and increase our reload speed. So very good. I'm assuming this goes up to 50. Uh, or sorry, decreases reload speed. My bad. Uh, and then we have tap the trigger, which will grant a short period of stability um, as soon as you pull the trigger. So, you know, that'll help with getting those headshots and stuff because um, it will increase your stability. 
We also have Kinetic Damage Mod, which you can change out for a Legendary Kinetic Mod to increase it to 286. At least for me, uh, my light is a bit low, so I need to get that up higher. Um, it does scale with your light level. Um, and then you also change the shaders. Looks like the um, little iron medallion thing right there does not change color, so you will just kind of have that gold in there. You can also infuse it. Alright, next up we have the fusion rifle. Um, so we have a high impact frame, slow firing, high damage. Um, so this is very similar to the merciless fusion rifle with a 900 charge rate of extremely high impact. Um, so, yeah. Okay, good range, good handling, good stability, and good reload speed. It does have a bit, you know, lower magazine size. I, I think the Merciless Fusion Rifle does have a bit higher magazine size on it, but yeah. Going to sites, we have Clean Shot IS, Red Dot 2, MOA, and Red Dot Micro. Again, really just personal preference here. Really doesn't matter which one you choose for Fusion Rifles. Uh, liquid Coils, which will increase our impact, but we will also get a slower charge time. This max out. It, imp it sorry, it, this max is out its impact, um, but it does make that charge time go way up. And we have enhanced battery, which will increase that magazine size if you really want two or three extra rounds in the magazine. Um, so yes, pretty pretty good. Um, moving on to the back, or sorry, moving on to the main perk, which is the backup plan. Um, this will, uh, sorry, this grant this will grant. Um, increased charge rate and stuff whenever you pull it out so this is again similar to very similar to some of the other fusion rifles out there um, but yes moving on to the day's fury grenade launcher so we have precision frame this is very similar to the prospector exotic um, rocket launcher basically you shoot your grenades and then once you let go of the trigger or RT um, all of the grenades will explode. We have countermass, um, which is nice. We have confined launch, which will increase our stability and blast radius, um, but it will decrease our projectile speed. And we have volatile launch, which is basically the same thing as the one right above, except it has a bit more blast radius, but reduced everything else. Honestly, I would just keep with countermass because it keeps your stats up nice. Um, if you really want that extra blast radius, just go with confined launch. Don't go with the volatile launch um, because you just lose way too much velocity, stability, and handling, um, in my honest opinion. So I would just keep with the first one that you get, which is countermass. Moving on to mini frags. These will increase your magazine size, reload speed, but it will decrease your blast radius. We have spike grenades, which deal extra damage to um, direct targets and will increase your stability. Very nice. Just kind of, you know, giving that extra little boost in damage. And we have snapshot sights, which basically just increase um, how fast you can ADS or down, aim down sights. Honestly, with grenade launchers, I never ADS anyway, so it doesn't really matter. It's kind of a useless perk to me. But I know some people do like to ADS when they're using grenade launchers. I just feel like the stability is way too much whenever you're using a grenade launcher, in my honest opinion. So that's why I usually just hip fire them, and it feels like I get a bit more accurate. Um, when I am hip firing, I don't have a ginormous, you know, weapon in my face every time I'm firing it. Next up is the pulse rifle. We have rapid fire frame, deeper ammo reserve slightly, faster reload when magazine is empty. Pretty nice. Keeping that ammo count up, as well as keeping that reload up as well. Oh, sorry, now we have hit mark, IS, rifle scope, SSF, and then another uh, micro. We have tactical mag, which will increase our stability and reload speed, but it will, um, and we have accurized rounds, which will increase our range. Um, we have Zen moment, causing damage with this weapon increases its stability, so pretty nice. Also, this looks really cool as well. Um, in my opinion. So, moving on to the scout rifle. So, here we are. High impact frame, slow rate of fire, high damage, similar to, um, what is it called? I think it's the Skyburner's Oath Exotic, um, scout rifle. Very slow rate of fire, but very high impact. Uh, we have armor piercing rounds, and I think it was a tactical mag up there. Um, and then kind of the main perk is pulse monitor. Um, which is nice. But again, this is a 150 RPM high impact, high range, decent stability, and handling speed. It does have a low magazine, but it actually has 14, which I think is actually higher for its like 
weapon archetype, or sorry, subtype or whatever you want to call it, um, for the 150 RPM scout rifles. That's nice. Next up we have the Fool's Remedy Sidearm. This is a uh, pretty, pretty cool. This is a Soros weapon. It has full auto on it and deeper ammo reserves and increased fire rate, or sorry, increased reload speed when the magazine is empty. So this is another one of those fully automatic sidearms, which is really cool. Um, it has that 450 RPM, decent impact and range, good stability. We have Control SAS, Tactical SAS, and Farpoint SAS. So we have ricochet rounds. Rounds will ricochet off of hard surfaces. And we have accurized rounds, which will increase our range. It's basically, um, of course, now I forget it. And then we have moving target, which increases your movement speed and target acquisition when uh, aiming down sights. Or, sorry, while moving while aiming down sights. So that's similar to the hidden hand perk, which will increase your target acquisition or aim assist, whatever you want to call it. Um, but yes, overall, a pretty decent sidearm. I definitely would like to get that. And for our final weapon, we have the submachine gun, the Hero's Burden. We have adaptive frame, well-rounded grip, reliable and sturdy, SLO-10 post, SPO-28 front, SPO-26 front. Those are the different sights for it. We have high caliber rounds, which increase our range, drop mag, which... Um, is actually a pretty interesting perk because whenever you reload, whatever's in the magazine is automatically taken away. So if you're a reactive reloader, this is not going to be a very good perk for you, um, like myself. But if you like to just use all of your mag, you are going to get that extra magazine uh, reload speed. Then we have threat detector increases reload speed, stability, and handling speed whenever you know there's a bunch of enemies around. Here are the additional rewards as well, um, legendary shards and stuff. And here's the uh, chest armor I was talking about with the kind of fur or hair in the back. Um, it's called the Devastation Complex, as you guys can see, very similar there. Uh, but anyways, guys, that will conclude the video. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, please leave a like, as it will help us out tremendously. And subscribe if you're new to the channel and want to see more. I've been your host, Antog, and I will see you, Starside Guardians. Peace.